Well, hello, it's Wednesday and it's time for Willie Hat's Wednesday Whip and you join me here in the garden. Uh, there's a bit of sun, a little bit of breeze, but there's no rain, which is fantastic. So I do apologise for not being with you last week, but I had a bit of a cold and so did Mr W and I didn't really think it would be wise to share it on screen, even though, of course, I can't spread the germ on screen, but it wouldn't have been a pretty sight. I'd have been lots of coughing and spluttering. Anyway, we're both well and we've uh, perked up a bit and we're doing lots of different things. So I will show you now what I have been up to in my knitting and crochet. Well, it's mostly knitting, actually. Uh, so sorry, you crochets, but I will be doing some of that later. So you might remember I had this lovely uh, yarn from uh, Mothy and Squid called Blue Tits. And I've now finished my um, socks like that. There you go. So I've done a nice rib pattern, so that's four knit and two purl, um, and uh, I think that gives quite a nice pattern. So it's just using a basic standard um, knit uh, sock pattern, but I've just put that rib in. So I'm very pleased with those, which is great, and they're nice. It's got merino one, so it's nice and soft, so that's brilliant. So um, these are, uh, are, for those that don't know, these are blocking things. You can buy them at great expense, or you can make some. By cutting out some plywood uh, but the idea is that you dampen your socks when you've made them and stretch them out there and it just make them look very very nice now normally uh, i mean i use them because it's nice to show you here and it's not all crumply and dangling around but normally i might if it was just for me i might just wear them <laughs> uh, but if you're giving them to somebody as a present it's quite a nice thing to do is uh, put block something and and also uh, garments and things as well so that it, it does flatten it out and makes it look look, look nice and it hangs better as well so um, that's uh, my socks. This is blue tit with uh, great tit, sorry, with variegated yarn. Now, some of you will know that I've knitted things with self striping yarn. So that's self striping. So this is West Yorkshire Spinner's blue tit. So that's great tit, variegated, blue tit, self striping. And you can see that um, as this comes out, it is definitely self-striping, so it looks very, very impressive. It looks as though you've changed colour up and done fair art technique, but actually you've just knitted, which is fantastic, isn't it? Uh, <clears throat> so the only thing is, if you try to use do a different garment, if you try to knit um, a jumper in this, it wouldn't come out self-striping because it does rely on the um, 60 stitches that you're going around on, so that's what it's baked on. So if you go into a shop... This is the kind of thing, that's a self-striping yarn. This is the West Yorkshire Spinner's candy, candy cane. You can see that it's, it does look stripy. Um, and then the this is a hand-dyed um, variegated yarn. And you can see it looks very different. It sort of comes out in blocks. But when you unwind it or wind it up into a ball, it will look different. So this is how the great tips look. So you can see it is very uh, uneven, whereas the blue tit you can see the stripe still in, in the ball of wool. So there you go. So know your wool. Obviously, uh, if you're buying some yarn in the shop, then the assistant might know which is self-striping and which isn't. Uh, but if you've just got bits of wool in your drawer, so that's variegated, that's self-striping. So you've got to look for the wider bands in the self-striping than that. I hope that helps. So what else have I been doing? I have been making I have been ditting my jumper. So this started this in December. This is using my stash. So the main yarn is King Cole Merino Blend and the contrast is Rowan Felted Tweed. It's got a fair old technique at the top, but it's plain at the bottom. It's a Rowan pattern uh, from two winters ago, I think it is. And uh, it's been very nice to do. So I've been doing this on and off as been doing different projects. I've now knitted all the different pieces. So that's the front and the back and the two sleeves. And it's now ready to assemble. I know, I know a lot of you don't like the assembly bit and they don't like the um, finishing off. But here's a few tips for you. So uh, on the shoulders, um, often when you're doing shoulders, you cast off 15 and on one row and then on the second row, on the third row, it's cast off 15 and blah, blah, blah. So that you end up with a sort of a step version like that. What I've done here, you can see this is a nice flat thing, but it's still... Uh, reducing the numbers on the shoulders and this is a technique called short row shaping sometimes referred to as German short row I've no idea why but um, <clears throat> there it is so it's nice flat and it means it's going to be much easier for me to sew up with uh, or finish off with a uh, mattress stitch uh, which I know some of you hate but I don't think it's fantastic it's magic it's brilliant um, so that's one tip there so um, the way it works is that you knit along but you don't knit to the end of the row you slip a stitch, wrap the yarn round, turn it round, and then knit back again and 
carry on doing that gradually so that you're reducing the number of stitches and then the, to finish off you just do the whole lot um, and that is uh, called short row shaping so it's a very interesting and nice technique to do it's not difficult to do it's just remembering where you are and understanding what the stitches look like so um, it's often used for um, shawls and things like that I used this is the pattern that I used it on so you can see this is the bottom so it looks as though it's been knitted and then you've added a bit on but actually it's it's um, all one piece and it's been knitted uh, in one go so there's no sewing and it's a very interesting technique to use so um, if you're interested let me know and I'll, I might be able to do a little video to show you how to do it as I said it's not that difficult to do so um, now all I've got to do is sew the shoulders together um, and the other thing about this pattern is it's suggesting that you actually knit in the uh, sleeves rather than doing a, a mattress stitch or back stitch to sew the seeds in seeds sleeves you actually use the um, uh, knitting technique I have used that before to do a shoulder seam and that gives a nice finish um, and so we'll see what it looks like I don't think it'd be very good for side seams unless you want to ridge uh, but we'll see how that goes and I will show you possibly next week when I have finished it. I think that is all for me today. Hopefully there'll be, oops, got, got caught there. Hopefully there'll be a bit more sunshine for me to enjoy with a cup of tea and a bit of knitting this afternoon. Uh, but uh, I hope you're having a good week and um, uh, doing a bit of knitting or crochet or perhaps just having a nice time relaxing and enjoying life. I will see you next week. Bye for now.